Hi, I'm Clark Dennis Cundiff, and honored and privileged to be the deep breath in, the pastor at Bay Lake United Methodist Church and 4300 Shore Drive in Virginia Beach, Virginia, coming to you on this first day of October 2023 as we begin our series on John Mark Comer's book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. And I, <laughs> I was like, wow, well, you know, hurry, what? And of course, you know, how often have I said, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, just, just busy. <laughs> I say that. And maybe you might say that too. I'm busy. And that's it's kind of a a badge of honor in the United States to be to be busy. But are we too busy? I mean, he's suggesting that we need to eliminate hurry. And it's like, well, I mean, we we have a do we get caught up in this chaotic pace of life here and this hustle mentality from jam-packed schedules to working too many hours, addiction to our phones, which I'm recording it. Um, is it, we want our lives to be filled to the brim every moment? And yes, is it, we kind of look on it, that's a good thing to be busy, 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 but can I be too busy? And does that push me into being hurried? So how does living busy lifestyle impact our ability to communicate and to be in content with Jesus Christ, to be with God, right? And John Mark Comer, he was a, a large church pastor that was going through a, a kind of an early midlife crisis, right? He was burnt out mega church pastor on the verge of a midlife crisis. He realized his busy schedule was contributing to his diminishing relationship with Jesus. So I guess the question is, do you ever feel overwhelmed with hurry, unable to complete everything on your <laughs> to-do list? So that's what his book is about. It's the ruthless elimination of hurry from your life. That hurry is the enemy of the spiritual life. And I think about it. I think all my worst moments are when I am in a hurry. You know, we always hear the story of somebody rushing because they're late and they look but don't see or fail to see, you know, the, the bicycle behind the car, the, the child behind the car. You know, so, so often those mistakes I've made has been, I was in too much of a hurry. You know, I love the story of a, of a 30 to 40 girl who got diagnosed with brain cancer and she realized that she only had so much time left and and she promised herself, she said, I will never hurry. I will never rush from one point to another again. I will take time. I will be in the present, not in the past, not in the future, and enjoy every moment. With the number of funerals we've had that I've been involved in, you know, even before that, I was especially thankful that I woke up this morning. Some people did not. Some people went to be with God this morning. And I cherish each day as an opportunity to receive God's unconditional love, to, to love God, to, to love each other, and to just appreciate the moments. But we do, we kind of idolize busyness, do more in less time, efficiency. I'm not sure it's effective, but it may be more efficient. Efficient is doing things faster. Effective is doing the right first, doing the right things the first time. Do the right things first. You don't have to do it again the second time. Carl Jung says, hurry is not of the devil. Hurry is the devil. And the problem is not when you have a lot to do. That's maybe appropriate. It's always when you have too much to do. And the only way to keep up that to-do list is to hurry. And if I'm rushing from here to there, what happens to my prayer time? What happens to me reading the Bible daily? What happens to my spiritual disciplines? Where did they end up? On the bottom of the pile? And think about it. God did not create hurry. We did. Remember, God did not create time. We did. Chronos, which is used 54 times in the Bible, refers to a specific amount of time, such as day or an hour. 
Kairos, which is used 86 times in the New Testament, refers to an opportune time, a moment or a season, such as a harvest time. I know in the seven habits, how they affect people, we talk about, yes, you have your watch, chronos time, right? And yes, I have appointments, and yes, it's important to honor the person to be on time. But I really should be wearing my kairos time, my compass, to make sure I'm always heading in the right direction, right? That it's the kairos that's more important, that quality time. Now, the scripture we look at today is the Martha and Mary story in Luke 10. Verses 38 through 42. Remember, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him to his house. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. If you ever had a sibling not help you when <laughs> you're doing work around the house during a work period with uh, three siblings, that, that certainly may have been the case, or at least I thought was the case from time to time. <clears throat> but Martha was distracted by her many tasks. And she came to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. How often I've gone to mom, mom, my brothers are not helping me. <laughs> and Martha has this gift of hospitality, doesn't she? And that was certainly expected back then, especially of a woman of the household. But the Lord said, Martha, Martha, you're worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. And Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken for her. Yes, Jesus is going after the busy Martha. Not going at the busy Martha, but a worried and distracted Martha, I guess, in some sense. In Eugene Peterson's message, he says, it says, Jesus says, Martha, dear Martha, you're fussing far too much and getting yourself worked up over nothing. One thing is only essential, and Mary has chosen it. It's the main course and won't be taken from her. <coughs> now, granted, maybe that was right. I mean, Mary, I mean, Martha was right. If you're hospitality, you're at your house, you have to do the meals, provide hospitality. But also Mary was doing the most important thing, which was listening to Jesus. Now, great, it would have been great if they both sat down and listened to Jesus. And they both got up and helped do the meal, wouldn't it? So it's, it is important to be present in the moment. You know, often we're too busy thinking about the past, worried about the future. And we let the moment slip by. And we miss that opportunity. I remember my therapist told me at some point, show up. Some days it's all I can do to show up, right? Be fully present. Tell the truth, especially as I get older, the way Papa said, and do not be attached to outcome. Show up, be fully present, right? Because that's the thing. I'm great. Oh, I'm just busy. And healthy business is where we have a lot to do, but not too much. But the unhealthy type is when there's too much to do and not enough time to do it. So we have to think, and, and that's what John Mark Comer is trying to impress upon us, that Hurry sabotages our ability to give and receive love with God and our neighbors. And he has, a, he calls it hurry sickness. It's a behavior characterized by continual rushing and anxiousness, a malaise in which a person feels chronically short of time and, and so tends to perform every task faster to get flustered when accounting any kind of delay. Yes, I am the person that takes the shortest line at the light. <laughs> and yes, I am the person that's like, come on, go, 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 go. And of course, I'm thinking, well, it's just efficiency. You know, we can get there quicker so I can do other things. And of course, isn't that why I've, I can be late at times? Because I, I think I can do more things in the time between now and when to leave than I should, as opposed to going early. I was talking to somebody recently. They intentionally went to church on Sundays 15 minutes earlier. So as Kyle Ottoman might say, have be available for that divine appointment that God has for you to meet. Isn't that a better way? A more calming way? I don't want to be rushing it's just one of the things I've, I've committed to myself. I'm going to go early from now on so I don't rush. And he says there's 10 symptoms of hurry sickness, irritability, hypersensitivity, restlessness, workaholism, nonstop activity kind of thing, emotional numbness, out of order priorities, a lack of care for your body. Remember we talked about self-care a couple weeks ago. Escapist behaviors, right? Binging, Netflix, slippage of spiritual disciplines, you know, did I get so busy I didn't do my prayer time or read the Bible today? Isolation. So if that's the hurry sickness, what's the good? Well, the good of being delivered from hurry is not simply pleasure, but the ability to do calmly and effectively with strength and joy, that which really matters. Right? We should take it as our aim to live our lives entirely without hurry. Take a deep breath. I had that desire to slow down 
matching the rhythm of life, Jesus model. Jesus didn't rush from one place to other. Remember, he always went for the one person. To manage our daily activities in a way that makes space for loving God and loving others. The two greatest commandments, to love God with our heart, mind, soul, strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And think about it, love, joy, and peace are incompatible with hurry. So let's live our lives without hurrying from one place to another. Take a deep breath. Enjoy life. It's a gift. Because we don't know when God calls us home. Of course, we get, as we profess our faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we do have that forgiveness of sins because of Jesus suffering on the cross for our sins, past, present, and future. He died and was raised and dead. We have the gift of eternal life. And God bless you. Hope you'll join us on Sunday mornings at 9 11. And I pray that don't hurry today. Don't hurry tomorrow. Take a moment. Take a deep breath. It'll all will be well. Take care. God bless you. Bye bye.